Hi, we are I am not my disease. And as the Alzheimer's Society states, see me, not my disease. And so we believe the problem is that people living with dementia experience many transitions in care. And as dementia progresses, their circle of care grows. Many more people are helping. And so communication can become difficult. From the interviews we've done, we found that it takes caregivers weeks at least, if not months, to learn about a person's care preferences. It can be as simple as how they like their tea, with milk or black. But these small details matter. They are necessary for high quality care and to support mental well-being. And so we have built a web platform that allows people to preserve their identity and their dignity by providing caregivers with personalized, actionable care information. And as John Tory mentioned, we want people to be seen as human. So I want to tell you about Santa. She spent a few years in the community, and now she's moving to a new long-term care home. And her caregiver, it needs to be trained on her story, her daily care routine, and her meal preferences, as well as those of everyone else on the floor. And so here they can quickly read her story. They can see she grew up on a farm, and that she really values faith, family, and friends. This information can also be used to investigate crises and to get her background information. When they go to her preferences, they can scroll down and see her regular grooming routine. They can see how she likes to dress, how she likes her hair for special occasions, and these small details, these daily things, soothe agitating behavior. And scrolling back up, you can see that she likes salty food. And so when the caregiver comes around, they can offer a little bit of extra salt with her meal. And so going to the residence list, the caregiver can see everyone that is in the home. And they can go to the list and see, you know, what are everyone's meal preferences? And what are the other preferences of everyone? And these can be used for resource allocation and to plan recreational activities for everyone in the home. And so this information can be easily printed and it can be seen on a tablet if they have the technology available as well. And so people living with dementia such as Santa and their family caregivers can use this platform to ensure high consistent level of care. For example, even Santa's sister in Florida can contribute to her story and help preserve her identity and dignity. Institutions will want their caregivers to use it as a resource to investigate agitating behavior and provide consistent care. We have also heard that certain care coordinating organizations, such as CCACs, would be interested in a similar platform so that their preferences are maintained as they go from the home to the community and to long-term care. And so our platform is unique because it's easy to use, customize, and anyone can be alerted when there are changes in their care preferences. And furthermore, we can integrate with other existing software in the future. And so we believe that we want you and the people who are living with dementia to get consistent, personalized, and dignified care across the care continuum. Thank you, team. We see people, not their disease. Um, yes, a question. Very nice app, no doubt about that. But I wonder what your app offers more than, for example, to the nursing home that I do research on patients in that nursing home, for example, mm -hmm. in Winnipeg Riverview. Every patient's room is full of uh, family pictures, histories, mm -hmm. and the nurses indeed do know the patient very well, mm -hmm. do know all the programs, mm -hmm. do know the, all the stories. Um, what new things your app offers that so, these traditional nursing homes don't have? It. That's an excellent question. And so one of the things is actually that we really care about is the continuum of care. And so we believe that this thing will be filled out, for example, when they're at home, when they're not in a nursing home yet, when they maybe have a personal support worker coming to help them, or as they get community services. Um, and then so that information is already available as they enter the home. And so we believe it's clients, residents, you know, just caregivers that will be using this, not just homes. If I can jump in, it's because the nurses know them so well that we think this is really important. Because, yes, nurses know them really well. Nurses can take care of the needs of people living with dementia. 
but oftentimes nurses are not the only people who are interacting with these people. There may be volunteers who are helping coming in and handing out meals, simple tasks, but there's also family caregivers who know all these histories, and you have distant family who aren't able to act as a family caregiver, but they know a lot of information about the person that they are willing to share in order to feel that comfort in that there is a consistent, personalized, customized, dignified care going on for that person. We, in fact, have a system where we can do updates through um, either the institutional caregivers or also the family as the taste of the people may change and keep that as something that both the institutional caregivers can access, the nurses can access, and also the family caregivers can access. One more question. I'm just going to point out really quickly that uh, the data is like really laid out, so it's easily printable as well. So also for the caregivers who want to print off all the information across the entire floor rather than go room to room and find out what the preferences are, uh, it's really quick, really easy. Thank you very much.